Hello. Can everybody hear me? Hi. I think I'm on now. I don't know if my sound's coming across. I hope it is. Yes. Hi. Hello. Okay. Hi. Hi, Dennis. Can you hear me? I can't hear you, Dennis. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, because I can't hear you. <laughs> okay. I I'll carry on then. Thanks, Dennis. Give me the thumbs up if, if everything's okay. Um, so this is about uh, relativistic mass. I'm, I'm going to try to show some slides first, then give a video. And Okay. So... There we go. Let's get on to the slides uh, present and uh, share screen. Uh, uh, go screen, entire screen. Hello. what we should see is the slides coming up. Uh, oh. So can we see the slides? I don't. So testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay. Okay. So I think the, uh, I think I can, sh this is working to some extent. There's my sound. Yeah, so if we, I'm assuming it's working, if we go to, uh, Einstein's first paper on special relativity. Uh, he it was published in 1905. Uh, there's no mention of relativistic mass in that paper, but it does talk about uh, transverse mass and uh, longitudinal mass, which are concepts that seem to get abandoned in favor of relativistic mass which came after 1905. So this is the equation for relativistic mass. And you have M is equal to the mass of the moving object and M subscript zero as the mass of the object when at rest with V at the speed of the object and C the speed of light in vacuum. And relativistic mass has been taught for a long time as part of special relativity. Uh, it's been taught in such books as this one by Richard uh, Feynman, and he's considered a genius by the mainstream. So going to his book, this is what he says about relativistic mass and from his point of view relativistic mass is the only thing you really need to know about special relativity actually special relativity is a bit more than that but basically he's thinking relativistic mass is the most important thing from special relativity and that's what he's teaching if we go to our David de Hilse's film on Einstein wrong, the miracle year. It's one of the points that David de Hilse brings up that uh, about relativistic mass. He talks to, if I recall it correctly, he talks to a physicist who's an experimental physicist, and he says that 
when students join him, he has to re-educate re them and tell them that there's no registered at mass. Uh, David De he also thought that was a very important thing to admit to. And so in my view, when you're initially presented with relativistic mass, relativistic mass, or even you're taught, taught it at university and so forth, it, it does seem to make sense as a reason why an object can't go faster than light. It's because the mass would increase too much and that would prevent you from going at light speed. But when you start thinking about relativistic mass in more detail, it starts to make less and less sense. So for a route to attack relativity, relativistic mass seems an easy target to go for first of all. But the pro-relativity people seem to have realized that as well, that relativistic mass does not really make too much sense when you think about it too much. And now seem to want to discard the concept. So as this is the person whose video I'm going to show, it's uh, Don Lincoln. He's an American physicist and he's done a lot of videos on relativity on the internet. Um, it, when you watch his video, he seems to be saying there is no relativistic mass and special relativity and he's discarding relativistic mass in that theory, question mark. I don't really think he deals with the subject very clearly. Uh, for me, I think there's a con job going on when you're trying to present discarding relativistic mass as not a change in special relativity. Well, that's my interpretation of it. I think he's trying to say that special relativity uh, doesn't have relativistic mass and it's not a change. And his jovial manner in his presentation is an attempt at deception. I think the unadmitted, cha unadmitted change in special relativity to a different theory was possibly a result of distance pointing out the absurdity with the idea of relativistic mass. So now on to the video. Let's get out. So if I can bring the video up and if you let me know whether you can hear the sound for that. So here we go. The video is coming up now, hopefully. There we go. This is into the video that Don Lincoln gives for relativistic mass. Maybe I can open the screen larger. Let's hope. There we go. Is it coming larger? Yep. Now let's play it. Uh, and at the end, we have a discussion about it. Uh, so. Oh, oh down yet. Right.
So, uh, Roger, we're not getting any audio out of the video here. So, uh, Roger, we're not getting any audio. Oh. So, not getting audio? No. Okay. So. So, not getting audio. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. <sighs> Yeah, I'm not sure what the problem might be. I think you have to restart and make sure you select the window you're sharing, yeah, uh, share sure the audio. What the problem might be. I think you have to restart and make sure you select the window you're sharing. Yeah. So sure. I could send you the link to the video online if you like. Could try doing that. Yeah, that's the link for it. So. Hello, can you hear me? Is that any help? Uh, well, we can hear you. Uh, are you going to try to restart the video? You've got it. So. I'll come out of this screen layout if I go. Stop screen. Okay. Are you able to show that, please? Okay, you re you removed your screen. Yeah. So try and reshare. Okay. That was, that was annoying. I got the I've my end. I got the sound. So doesn't make sense if you. I think you have to maybe share a, a Chrome tab. Yeah. Not the entire screen. Not the window. You have to share a specific Chrome tab to share the audio. I don't understand that. Where's the Chrome tab? So that's when you when you first click on present. Uh, yeah. You know, so three tabs. So what leftmost one says Chrome tab, and then you need to select. Uh, I don't see anything called Chrome tag. You're not seeing anything called Chrome ta tab. No, no. I've got slides, extra camera, video file, or share screen. Oh, well, you're on the wrong menu. Um, it's, you should get that. Uh, where are you getting that from? You see I when you. Know. click present you'll get slides extra camera video file but you're supposed to then click on share screen no. and then it should say although i'm not seeing when i click on chrome tab i'm not seeing no. uh it's showing me that do i have chrome up i don't understand it's not giving me that option of chrome tag it's not showing you that? No. Well, let's see here. Let me see whether I can 
share screen. Yeah. Too complicated, isn't it? Yeah, I am not seeing why I am not getting the Chrome tab either. Select a tab to share. And it's not letting me do that. Let's be present. Share screen. It should be showing me Chrome. If I put up a new window. You can also drop me the link to the video file. Maybe I could present it if I can get this working. I did put it link up. So, so John Chappelle there. Okay, so but let me see if I can do this. So Okay, thank you. Um let's see here. Mm. Oh, what's it doing? Present, share screen, entire screen, select screen. Okay, so now you can see my screen, right? So yeah. what you should be doing is, well, I guess I can't show you that. You have to click down here, and it's not really showing, because I wanted to be able to show you what it looks like uh, when you're trying to share the screen. Yeah. But um, let's see here. Let's you just do the video. Hold the video. You did you should. Put, where did you put the video link? It's up there. Uh, uh, if I still want to do it again. Paste. There you go. So where did you put the video link here? I don't see it in the private chat. Me. I put it up again, I think. Okay, we've got it there. See, but for some crazy reason, I can't actually copy that. Oh. Why don't you stick it in a chat like that? I cannot copy it. I have to type that in manually. Which I guess How about put it in the chat? Let it go private chat. Paste. I put it in private chat. Is that any good? Sorry about all this delay here. It's uh, still hasn't quite got to see bugs worked out here. Yeah. Okay, let's see whether we can uh, okay. copy that one out. There we go. That one out. Okay, so do you want to start at the beginning or? Just, it's only a short 10 minute talk, so. Okay, well, we can cool. get in. It's probably got up first. Let's see whether we can get this to work this time. So I'm going to put yeah. that. Share screen, Chrome tab, share audio. Okay, let's see whether we get sound. Looking hopeful. I can hear it. You can hear it. Okay, then we got some. Oh, yeah. I'm down. Yeah. Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity makes some very mind blowing predictions. Clocks run at different rates, objects shrink, and things can't go faster than light. And all of these things are absolutely true. Relativity has been thoroughly tested, and there is no credible criticism of the theory. 
although you wouldn't know it from the piles of unsolicited correspondence I get on the subject. So let's talk about that last one. The idea that you can't go faster than the speed of light. This is a well-demonstrated fact. So why is it true? If you ask a well-educated scientific layperson, they will tell you that it's because the mass of an object increases as the velocity increases. In fact, you'll hear this said by people with physics degrees. There's only one thing. It's just not true. Now, I realize that me saying that is going to confuse a lot of you, like this guy here, for example. So what's going on? Why is it that even some physicist will say that the mass of an object increases as the speed increases? Heck, why is it that even I have said that upon occasion? Shh, don't tell anyone. The reason is a combination of how scientists teach relativity and our intuition at low velocity. I'm going to explain it to you first conceptually and then show just a little math for the physics-minded viewer. So it starts with the concept of inertia. Inertia is the property of matter which resists changes in motion. Basically, it's equivalent to the idea that I can push this toy car easily, but this much bigger car is harder to push. And at low speeds, inertia is equivalent to mass. At very high speeds, this is no longer true. Mass and inertia are no longer the same. An effect that didn't matter before begins to matter a great deal. So this is where it is easier to show what is going on with physics equations. I know some of you have equation anxiety, but don't worry. I promise I'll be gentle. If you've ever had a physics class, you've encountered a concept called momentum. Momentum has a meaning very similar to the colloquial meaning. Colloquially, once something has momentum, it's hard to stop. Well, in physics, we write momentum using this simple equation here. P stands for momentum, M stands for mass, and V stands for velocity. So you see, momentum can get big if mass is big or if velocity is big, or I suppose if both get big. Momentum is related to inertia. Something with a lot of momentum is hard to stop, but that could be a slow moving but very massive train or a very light but super fast bullet. That equation and those intuitions are pretty familiar. The problem arises when we start going at speeds that are very fast. At very high speeds, this equation no longer applies. The correct equation is this one here. We see that it looks like the normal momentum equation, but there is this added term, the gamma term. In fact, this equation with the gamma term is really the right momentum equation and it works just fine even in day-to-day -day life. So I told you that the equation for momentum was P equals M times V and also P equals gamma times M times V. How can they both be true? That's because at pretty low speeds, gamma has a numerical value of one. Think about some really fast things. The fastest fastball ever thrown, gamma is about one, or more specifically, this number here. How about a bullet from a sniper rifle? That's pretty fast, but gamma is still pretty close to one. This time, it's this number here. In fact, in order to make gamma to be 1% different from one, which is to say 1.01, you need a velocity so fast that it can circle the Earth at the equator in a single second. So in any situation you've ever encountered, gamma is basically one, and you can just drop it from the equation. But when you start going very fast, you can't do that anymore. At 10% the speed of light, gamma is 1.005. At 50% the speed of light, gamma is 1.155. And at 90% the speed of light, gamma is 2.294. When you get to 99% the speed of light, gamma is 7.089. And as you get even closer to the speed of light, gamma gets bigger and bigger. As you approach the speed of light, gamma becomes infinite. The equation here on the screen is how you calculate gamma. The symbol V is velocity and C is the speed of light. 
I just put it here if you want to play with the numbers yourself. If you don't care to do that, you don't need to worry about it. But I know some of my viewers really do love their equations. So let's get back to the idea that mass increases as you go faster and faster. How did that arise? Well, basically, it boils down to how we physicists introduced relativity to new students. Almost all people who are learning about relativity have taken an introductory physics class, and they're very familiar with the classical momentum equation. So what physicists did was to invent an idea that they called relativistic mass. Relativistic mass was just gamma times the actual mass. If you do that, you can then write the momentum equation as just momentum equals relativistic mass times velocity. That equation looks just like the introductory momentum equation. Taking this approach is helpful when you teach relativity. That way, you can focus your lesson not on new and unfamiliar equations, but rather on big ideas, especially the idea that momentum at high speeds acts differently than it does at low speeds. But this idea of relativistic mass comes at a price. The price is a misconception. For instance, people might take relativistic mass and Newton's equations for gravity and come up with some silly hodgepodge equations that don't accurately reflect what is going on. For instance, if a particle moving very, very close to the speed of light has a near infinite gamma, I've had people tell me that this means it has an infinite mass and such a particle passing near the Earth will have an infinite force. This isn't true, but it confuses the heck out of some people. Now, I should be honest and admit that there is some debate in the physics community about this relativistic mass idea. For those of you who want to dig into this whole thing a bit more, I've put a URL in the description for this video that gives you something to read. But I would have to say that the majority of physicists who deal with relativistic situations on a daily basis really dislike the concept of relativistic mass. We say that an object has only one mass, which is the mass you measure for an object when it isn't moving with respect to you. Some people call that the rest mass, but it's really the only mass. So I suppose that on behalf of physics educators out there, I should apologize for this confusing concept. Relativistic mass is a great way to develop intuition on why you can't go faster than the speed of light. After all, if mass gets infinite, it gets harder and harder to push it. So it has some pedagogical value. But if I may be permitted a biblical reference, there comes a time when we must put aside childish things. And relativistic mass is one of those things one must move beyond if you want to really understand relativity. Of course, this leaves us wondering why we can't go faster than light. Without relativistic mass, we're left with a momentum equation which tells the story, but really doesn't develop your intuition. So I'll tell you what, I'll make another video that explains the real reason that you can't go faster than light and that might very well be one of the coolest things ever. By the way, this video is a little more technical than others I've made. I'm okay, not sure uh, the that's it. it. You find Can it you close? and then feels comfortable. Can you close it? Uh, thank you. That was it. Can you hear me now? Franklin, thank you. Right, so any questions? Did it make sense to anybody? because it didn't make any sense to me. The uh, the idea that uh, special relativity has uh, relativistic mass one moment, and then you, th then you decide later on, no, you shouldn't have relativistic mass. It doesn't make sense to me why that change. Why did they suddenly make that change? And this uh, video clip by uh, Don Lincoln didn't explain anything to me as far as I'm concerned. If you think about it, why does special relativity, how did it get the idea of relativistic mass in the first place? It's not very clear, but that was what was being taught for a very long time. Where did that reasoning behind that come from, that you should have relativistic mass? And then later on, what's the reasoning for discarding the idea? None of that makes any sense to me. It's just, where's the reasoning? what's going on, why one thing and uh, one moment and why something else later and what experiments are they s supposed to be referring to that make them believe such and such a thing. Because uh, from my understanding, experiments were showing relativistic maths and that's why it was taught 
now they're saying there isn't relativistic mass so what experiments are they going by which are suddenly showing them that the previous experiments were wrong there's nothing nothing being explained it's just make your stuff up as you go along to, as far as i'm concerned so does it make sense to anybody oh so if hi dennis okay hi, dennis Roger. well uh with, since they don't change any of their predictions with this has to be semantics and uh they uh like to, they don't like to change uh uh, relativistic mass is it's showing that uh, it's showing that you know, that uh, if a particle went by at 99.99% .99 of the light by the moon, say, it would have so much mass that it would attract the moon. That's what they were trying to say. But that's a, saying that gravitational mass equals inertial mass, which it doesn't. Uh, Ron Hatch showed that. If you want to See, as recently as a good paper, readable, 2007 uh, physics essays, Ron Hatch, uh, A New Theory of Relativity. And uh, so, uh, but they can't accept the fact that uh, inertial mass is not equal necessarily to gravitational mass because that has been an accepted paradigm in physics. Uh, oh, golly. For a long, long time. So uh, they have to work around it. And uh, some of them may actually realize that uh, gravitational mass does not equal inertial mass, but they, they don't tell too many people about it because the cancel culture is here. Yeah. Yes. Uh what they're doing if, if they're doing semantics semantics they're not saying that's what they're doing they're just throwing out lots of things which don't make any sense they're well it, from their point of view it makes sense to say that uh if a particle with a huge uh, relativistic mass goes by the moon it would attract the moon because they're confusing gravitational mass and inertial mass so yeah. from their point of view it, it does make a sense but their point of view is wrong. Well, when they when they construct special when they construct special relativity, uh, they usually start talking from these are the two principles or assumptions of the constancy of light speed and the principle of relativity, and and they're not saying anything about whether gravitational mass equals inertial mass. Well, that was decided a long before Einstein. I mean. Uh, yeah. Newton basically decided that when he didn't distinguish between the two. Yeah. So the, 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 when they introduced their two assumptions, they then start further on down the line talking about mass. And you're kind of like, well, what are the hidden assumptions or what they're supposed to be dealing with mass? And they sort of like, suddenly it leads to people like Donald Lincoln saying there's no relativistic mass. So because he doesn't want inertial mass to be the same as gravitational mass. But that's, that's, right. never, that's never an assumption that's explicitly stated in the formulation of special relativity by Einstein. There's nothing well, I know, else. but uh, the fact that gravitational mass is the same as inertial mass, at least equal to it, comes basically from Newton. You know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's yeah. thoroughly entrenched. Yeah. So when, when you read when you read Einstein, from 1905, you're saying. Is he assuming the same things as Newton about mass? Because he's yeah. not saying I'm going to assume something different to Newton about mass. And so it's sort of it's it's just a totally ambiguous theory from the very beginning. Well, I don't know if that's fair because uh, even Newton thought uh, uh, relative uh, gravitational inertial mass was the same, and they've done some experiments. Which yeah. they claim show that that's true. I mean, they've done some fairly high tech experiments to try to distinguish whether there's any difference. But uh, since they haven't found any difference in these experiments, they've deduced the fact that, well, it must be true. But Ron Hatch has shown that GPS 
shows that it's not true. Mm -hmm. they, they, he doesn't, Ron Hatch did not have a PhD from a quote, good, unquote, mm -hmm. university. And so yeah, they ignored I, I, him. I, I've been yeah, to... Some of old engineer and they ignored him. I, I, I've been to uh, uh, lots of uh, talks on relativity by the mainstream. And there was an expert on GPS at one of these talks. And his point was that GPS, the data from GPS gets interpreted by uh, relativity. So and he says yeah, that's fully consistent with relativity, the data they're collecting. So with Ron Hatz, he's setting up GPS, but not using relativity. And, and then further on, yeah, down the, the day he died, that. Uh... Uh, sorry, sorry. You, 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 I think you got problems with the sound. You got feedback. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Ron Hatch maintained until the day he died that yeah. relativity was, which does not imply GPS, and GPS uh, uh, is against both special and general relativity. And that's in that paper I just mentioned. Uh, yeah, a new but that, that, gravity. Yeah, but the point was that's from a person who's setting up GPS. That's his interpretation of what he's doing. But then further on down the line, there's a lot of data collected from GPS and the physicists are then looking at the GPS data and they're saying that is consistent with uh, re relativity. So you've got this split between what one person is doing and what the other person is doing. So it's, it's, it's not a coherent procedure. Uh, but but the, Ron Hatch claimed that if, if special relativity and general relativity were correct, uh, GPS would not work as it does. Yeah, but that, that, that's not what the relativity experts say, because the relativity expert, experts say when they look at the GPS data, it's consistent with relativity. And so it's a much harder problem to tackle when you've got the split between those two points of view. Yeah, it's hard to convince people that all these people yeah, could yeah. be wrong or lying yeah. or both, you know. Well, the, well, the relativity experts, uh, they, they, they're they just very confusing. Uh, well, you know, they, the relativity experts used to write papers before GPS was successful saying yeah. things like, you engineers don't understand relativity. If you did, you'd know that it'll never work. Yeah. Now they that, claim that it, it works, and, and that's because of. Yeah. I mean, it's all thing. So, so the interpretation of the data, they're not really explaining how a GPS engineer can look at that, look at it differently to the way a physicist will then later interpret that data. And it, it, we're getting, trying to get back to this relativity mass again. It doesn't make sense to me. What is the reasoning? that they suddenly decided relativistic mass existed and then what is the reason they suddenly decided relativistic mass doesn't exist it's all like it's just ambiguous reasoning it's it's not it's not coherent in any way if you go back to einstein he's not clear and making it clear what's going on he's given a theory he kinds of mass. he had transverse the, mass and, and yeah and longitudinal mass and sort of, uh, why, why did they discard that? I don't know why they discarded those ideas, but they decided to, uh, to discard those and go with the idea of relativistic mass. And Don Lincoln. Which was, uh, which was longitudinal mass, was the, yeah. was the relativistic mass, and yeah, perpendicular was uh, yeah. a different formula. Yeah. 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 So it's, 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 all of it is just a total mess in relativity as to what they're doing one minute they do one thing next minute they do something else and they still claim it's relativity whatever they do and, yeah. and, and it's what they're doing it doesn't make any sense whatsoever but they claim it makes sense the physicist like don lincoln says yeah, it makes sense that what what how how did you reason that and it's just, it, it didn't they don't provide it they just give these bad videos yeah and, they, uh, I think, uh, you know, Lincoln has been sort of fired. I don't know if you knew about this or not. He's no longer slack. He's at, in Texas. Mm -hmm. 
I, I don't know yeah. anything about that. And the reason why is uh, I have probably has something to do with these videos, that, the one which you showed. Yeah. Because there, he talks like most physicists are coming around to his point of view, but I'm yeah. not sure that's true. Uh, a lot of well, physicists don't like him, and they and they got and that's why they got rid of him, so to speak. Yeah. Well, well he's well, still well, in Texas at some university in Texas. Well, I did find one of the things I found interesting. He said the mainstream are still in debate about this subject. So he's not he's not given a definitive version of what how this relativistic mass is to be understood. And that was sort of like a get out clause. Well, he you know, when he says there's still debate, yeah. I don't think he realized how much debate there was. Uh, now that he's gone from Slack and in, in Texas, which mm. is sort of a step downward. It may occur to him that there's, a, yeah, there's a lot of debate. <laughs> yeah, but well, I'm not. I've not seen access to that sort of debate. You get these uh, popular uh, videos on uh, relativity from the mainstream, and they sort of like gloss over all these problems. This sort of they're not saying always oh, a big problem of understanding whether we should have relativistic mass or not. It doesn't. That does not seem to be a video. The populists are giving they they were just always just presenting how clear cut and easy to understand relativity is and they're just missing out all the mess yeah under the carpet what is this debate about relativistic mass they, they've missed it out they, they don't want to tell you the disagreements they're having over it no, they, uh, they, they don't want to show their dirty laundry that's right. Yeah, that's it. They, they got dirty laundry, and they pretend they haven't. And then, then when you, as a dissident, you try to bring this up with them, they're not going to talk to you. They're just going to pretend it's not there. They're going to be just as, as per the video at the beginning, where Don Lincoln says he gets lots of letters from dissidents, right? and he's just dismissing that's cranks, and so all that. Paperwork yeah, I just called going him once. I called him once, uh, Roger. Yeah. I phoned him up and I got him. I, I He would never answer the phone again when I yeah. called him, but I got him one time and he explained uh, something about the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, what do they call it, that slack, the uh, accelerator. He explained some de things about the accelerator, such as how fast they make the, Electrons move uh, yeah. from one end to the other. Well, we're mm -hmm. still operational. It's gone now, and so I got some valuable information from him. And uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, he probably does get a lot of phone calls and letters. You know, for, uh, for people he, he dismiss, dismisses as cranks. So well, no, he, he didn't dismiss me as a crank. He gave me the information I needed, and uh, I, I said goodbye and thank you, and then that was it. Good. Okay. Thank you. If we go see what somebody else has to say now, shall we? Has somebody else got any flags up? Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. So we've got here uh, Harry Rickers saying, author on Cuna seems to be the main proponent of the relativistic concept is incorrect yeah that that seems to be right that seems to be one of the main papers on it and i don't know uh what is accepted from that by the rest of the mainstream uh, so cornelius says from what i read einstein was not the originator of the term uh, which means relativistic mass he was not an advocate of the term uh, but the problem is there with einstein said a lot of things he's changed his mind a lot of times and other people have try to make sense of what he said and so they bring in these concepts so it's just more the ongoing mess being made in relativity and so harry says lorenz discusses relativistic mass in theory of electrons yeah you know, the problem is that we're not really supposed to be going well the mainstream is not really supposed to be going by lorenz it's supposed to be going by einstein so it's trying to understand what einstein's saying if somebody else is making more sense like Lorentz well they're not going by that they're going by Einstein and that that's that's creating more mess 
And so George says uh, Einstein has no clue what mass is. Well, yeah, that's part of the problem. Uh, and he's, George says, uh, so George says, Einstein says mass and energy are related by something. Yeah, and that's very, if you go on, we, we've not done the E equals MC squared equation, but if you go on to that, then that's very confusing as well. And the concept of relativistic mass, well, that's confusing enough. And then it's kind of like, well, you now go on to the how energy and mass are related, and that's even more confusing. Uh, Harry says, Lorentz says that mass increased to infinity before Einstein. Yeah, that's the same problem. We're going by Einstein and not by Lorentz. So if, even, even if Lorentz says something better than Einstein, well, how does it fit in? Thank you. Hi, frankly, hi. So I, I do have a comment on this about mass yeah. increasing to infinity. You know, I yeah. want to bring up the point that uh, going faster than the speed of light is achieved uh, actually all the time in nuclear reactors yeah. and it's called uh friend uh, let me see here this is the friend like radiation explain yeah. maybe yeah. i yeah. can uh yeah. show this website here because i yeah. think that's that, 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 that is another that is another thing to argue about this stuff is yeah that this relativistic mass doesn't make sense and then you're going on to this fast than light thing as well Chernkov radiation, yeah, that, that's another topic which doesn't make Yeah, because sense. things can go faster than the speed of light. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. like the speed of light is like 75% of that in vacuum. But in fact, in yeah. water, you know, the speed of light is, you know, a constant yeah. C. Yeah. And protons coming out of the reactors can exceed that velocity. Yes. And so when they do, they, you know, they don't become infinitely massive as the relativistic formula would imply, right? Yeah. Obviously not, um, but they do leave behind, just like sound waves, they leave shock waves. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is the argument that, you know, um, that even that gamma factor doesn't actually go to infinity, you know? Um, yeah. There's actually really no reason, uh, you know, they're, they're saying that the intu intuition is that it can't exceed the speed of light because the mass would go infinite, but Obviously, in actual physical experiments, it, it just doesn't do that. So it's, it's, it's not, that was the traditional way of talking about it that you. I so know. you know, I think that yeah. you know, a, a proton could potentially yeah. cer certainly go faster than the speed of light, and if it did, yeah. you would just simply see this mm -hmm. this Cherenkov radiation happening, right? That's yeah. how you know yeah. it was happening. Uh, you, you'd see that, but I, I personally yeah. don't see that as being any hard limit. Yeah. Also, in the when they're doing cosmology, when they're talking about galaxies uh, in the expanding universe, they say some of the galaxies are expanding faster than the speed of light, and, and then they start saying that, that doesn't contradict relativity because it's not. Uh, some, some get out clause from that as well so that they, they're always trying to give a get out clause when they're making observations of something going faster than the speed of light in the case uh, of chernkov they they talk about the speed of light is constant in vacuum but in different mediums it goes at different speeds yeah and you can so, repeat so it they just confuse things happen. yeah they just confuse things uh, another get, thing is that uh you know, when I was looking at this initially, I was having discussions with Bill Lucas, mm -hmm. who, uh, you know, actually works on particle accelerators, you know, and my initial impression was yeah. that the reason why you cannot exceed the speed of light is that there's nothing that can push any object faster than the speed of light, yeah. right? You can't, you know, yeah. if you have something that can only push five miles per hour, you know, the maximum yeah. you can go is five miles yeah. per hour, no matter how many of those things you, you shove behind. Yeah. The thing you're pushing uh, so i was questioning whether you know there was an actual you know energy increase but yeah. uh, bill did explain to me that during the experiments you know they can measure the amount of energy that happens during collisions so and they can show that the amount of energy goes way beyond uh what you would expect 
if the mass was just constant and just the velocity was hitting a limit. Yeah. So they experimentally are able to demonstrate, you know, that curve where it goes to you know, like seven point something as, as it gets 99% speed of the light. So yeah. I know that that was interesting because, you know, that that, you know, uh, yeah. destroyed my initial theory that, you know, that's the reason why we, we couldn't exceed the speed of light. Okay. But um, I'm a little bit surprised that you seem a little bit uh, still confused about the video. The video itself seemed very clear to me okay. uh, that the mass should be considered a constant. You know, he showed the baseball and like yeah. it has one mass. And yeah. It doesn't change. Yeah. Versus the relativistic uh, conception that somehow the mass of that baseball would reach infinity as it approached the speed of light. Yeah. But really, he explained it seemed very clearly that there's actually just another gamma factor that needs to be multiplied in that formula. I mean, you could have changed anything in that formula. You could have changed the V. You could have given it a relativistic velocity, I suppose. Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah. That, that goes it's back to... Speed, but they people just choose to yeah. uh, do gamma times M and call that relativistic yeah. mass. Mm -hmm. But I think it was quite clear he was explaining that the that those things don't really exist. And I, I would agree <laughs> that the only thing that exists is this gamma factor. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that made sense to me. And I, not I, to I, me. No, so not so to why me. doesn't that make sense to you? I'm well, uh, the problem is you go back to uh, Einstein 1905, they discard what he's saying about mass with this transverse and longitudinal mass, and then they get to relativistic mass. And so what they're doing is they're looking at the equation with that gamma factor, and then they're saying, oh, that gamma factor should be put on the mass. So the mass is increasing by that gamma factor. And so that's what they thought back then. And now with Don Lincoln, he's coming along and saying, no, you shouldn't put that gamma factor with the mass. So what? why are they suddenly changing their mind about all these things? Why do they think one thing? Why do they now, why is people like Don Lincoln trying to think something else? What's all the reasoning behind all that? Why, are the, why, why all this confusion about what the equation is supposed to mean? Well, I, I don't think it was a confusion. It was a, I don't know, a clarification. Uh, because me, it's a mathematical well, property that if you're multiplying three yeah, things, yeah. you can group together any two. Yeah. And the result the same, right? Yeah. So, so if you if you if you multiply these the results of any experiment. If, if you if you multiply the rest mass by the gamma factor, and the, and the gamma factor is really just a number. So you multiply the rest mass by gamma factor, you are increasing the mass. And that's when they call that a relativistic mass. So you are making the mass bigger just by multiplying it by the gamma factor. And so they originally they thought, yeah, that's it. That's what you should do. And now they're saying, no, that's not what you should do. What are they well, talking that's about? That's why they, he was explaining that, you know, actual relativists don't like the term. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's why they don't like the term because they've just got this uh, number it is just a number it's not a physical quantity like a mass length or time it's just a number it's the gamma factor and you, what are you doing with the gamma factor you're multiplying different physical quantities by that so what, well, I mean, are you still what, what, what is supposed to be going on confused about something i mean you just fully explained the situation so i don't yeah. know what left to be confused about well the, it's the debate what, what are they deciding he he he, uh, he mentioned the debate and he actually uh, gave his opinion, but he didn't make it clear that he was just voicing his opinion about relativistic mass. So there's an ongoing debate. What does it mean? You multiply things by relativistic mass, the relativistic uh, factor, which is the gamma factor. What's all that well, mean? What's that, all, what is a, your opinion on it? Maybe it's all just a mess. It's, it's just a mess. When, when, a, when a bullet accelerates to the speed of light, does yeah. its mass actually change? Well, I, if you, if you, I, I'm avoiding going by what I can go by, but I go back to Einstein's original paper in 1905, 
and in my talks I point out it hasn't been translated properly into English. So you've got a change in the theory from how the theory was in 1905 when it was written in German to what it was then translated to in English in 15 years later. So it's not the same theory. You've got the German 1905 version and you've got the 1920s English version. And so why that change, that doesn't make any sense to me. So everything is a just complete and utter mess, even from trying to understand what Einstein is talking about from the original. You see, that's the mess then. And then they sort of like add more to the mess by these things like relativistic math and so forth. Well, I mean, is it true that uh, the 1905 paper, you know, it doesn't even mention yeah. relativistic mass, you say? But is it, that it, it, ha it, it has longitudinal mass and it has uh, transverse mass and it doesn't have relativistic mass. Uh, relativistic mass seems to be a concept added later after 1905. And I think the person who added it was some physicist called Frank or something. And I think then Einstein adopted it. I think, but it's just going by uh, what I presented here in this video and what I've done said, it's just a complete and utter mess now with what relativistic mass is supposed to be about. Okay, let's see if we get some... It, it kind of, my, the way I think about it is it's like uh, too many cooks spoil the broth. It's an old saying where if, you, if you've got uh, one cook and you send him off to cook your dinner you can come back with a brilliant dinner but if you send a hundred people in to the kitchen to start adding their contributions to what's being cooked then what comes out is a total mess and if you've got that with physics you've had hundreds of people contributing to the theory of relativity and now it's just a total mess people have added things taken things away and it's just a total absolute mess it's not coherent it's what what a group of people have done. Well, there's a little discussion here about what actually is uh, inertial mass. I mean, the question yeah. is, where does this gamma factor actually come from? I mean, why should, yeah. why should uh, as a, an object is accelerated towards the speed of light, yeah. uh, it changes the momentum. Yeah. And they mentioned momentum being mass times velocity, but we also have kinetic energy, which is one half mv squared. And, and there's also a controversy as to which, which one of those is correct, right? What, yep. I mean, they're both supposed to be representing energy, so how could both of them possibly be correct at the same time? But here I think uh, it's saying that you know the resistance to acceleration is a result of saying ether pressure. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the way I see it. it uh, that as you approach the speed of light, uh, the, the you're actually storing energy into the ether, and the, you're, it's like stretching a spring or compressing a spring, and you're just compressing that spring more and more and more, and so it's capable of of, of absorbing more and more energy to the point where it becomes pretty close to infinite. Yeah, so the, when the introduction or the relativistic math and the relativistic factor, which is the gamma factor, the introduction of that seems to be coming from the Lorentz transformations. And so it's some sort of fiddle of adding it into the energy equation. And then it's sort of like they interpret it as being on the mass. And the next minute they say, no, it's not on the mass. So it's some sort of fiddle going on there again with the maths mathematics of uh, how how you're bringing in the relative relativistic factor the gamma factor and we do still have some other people in the green room we have Harry, okay and we have thank James. you uh, did either of you guys want to come up uh, give yeah me next person if you want to come okay. up that's up thank you Franklin time. thank you Franklin so moving on shall we anybody else yeah I don't see anybody waving so great okay good uh so uh, we've got a comment down at the bottom there. Cornelius is saying gravitational mass is the measure of the force between uh, two naturally charged objects. 
Oh, new, t two neutrally charged objects. My eyesight is bad. <clears throat> two neutrally charged objects. Yeah, that, I think so there. But Einstein, I don't know if he defined it that way. But if you go by Newton, you probably think of it that way. I mean, the other question is why should inertial and gravitational mass be the same? Anyway, they would seem to yeah, be that, 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 different that's, items, right? That, that, that's, that's, that, that, is, comes, that's, that, that comes under Einstein's equivalence principle. Uh, and next, next week, I'm going to say that's wrong. <laughs> so, I'm going to, Einstein's equivalence principle is wrong. So that's what's coming next week. Uh, sort of like everybody's got this idea of what m an object does. Why? Boy, Galileo, when you drop, drop your balls from the linear tower of Pisa, everybody's got the idea of what the equivalence principle is that from that. And as we go to Einstein, when he deals with that, Einstein does it wrong. So you've got Einstein, he's made a mess of special activity. He then goes on to the equivalence principle and he's making more mess. So it's, it's just a process of making more mess all the time. So I'm bringing that up next time. So is that, is was that vaguely clear? Thank you. Thank you. So go back to the comments. Uh, uh, so thank you, Franklin. Uh, so Cornelia says, uh, the key observation that gravitational energy does not equal inertial energy I, I don't know if einstein said that or, or if newton was making that claim so it's very confusing and uh, so nick percival says general relativity is explicitly based on the equivalence principle which claims the equivalence of gravitational and inertial mass yeah it, that, that that is part of it the the equivalence principle is is actually a lot more than just that it's a uh, uh, you've got things like the weak equivalence principle and the strong equivalence principle and then what Galileo meant by it and then by what Einstein means by it. So it's it's just a more of a confusing mess as to what Einstein did. Thank you, Nick. Anybody else? So next comment. <laughs> Any other comments? Anybody else want to come on to talk? Well, if, if, if that's it, if I, if I utterly confused you now with relativistic maths, uh, we can finish this session and say it's just a short session. And I'll come back to you with the next Saturday and confuse you with the equivalence principle. So shot, oh, you've got some other comment here. Shotwave says the uh, mainstream only has gravity in its toolbox along with collisions and explosions they leave uh i think that's out of the out, out the force that really guides the universe the electric force yeah yeah that, that is that is that's along the white lines so you've got the electromagnetism from maxwell's equations and you've got gravity from newton's uh, newton's theory and how those things are supposed to be combined sort of like gets messed up again when you go to Einstein. So that's another problem. The forces get messed up, but then Einstein discards forces in favor of space-time curvature. But then there are people who argue that Einstein didn't discard forces. And once again, it's uh, just another interpretation of Einstein because Einstein changes, changes his mind a lot. And so this person says, one I never see is any discussion about whether weight is the same as gravitational force or not. Mainstream seems to assume this, but it's not true. A bit a convenient approximation measure. Yeah, I think when you go back to when I go back to school physics, they were teaching that weight is um, is due to the gravitational force. So, so you go back a long time to about ten years old. So I think that's the sort of thing they were teaching. And when you go into Einstein, things just get more confusing on that issue as well. So 
and that's one of the problems with this relativistic mass is it supposed to be uh, purely inertial or is it supposed to be a gravitational thing and it doesn't so when you start thinking about that this relativistic mass thing doesn't make sense Andrew says I cannot understand why these hosts don't look at the data for nuclear experiments to understand how to use these relativistic concepts. Uh, well, I've read great many of these uh, research papers and they don't really go into the theory too much. And uh, when I've checked with this sort of thing, the research papers, they're not concerned with uh, talking about theoretical concepts so much it's just and they're going to conclude at the end whether the data they've collected agrees with relativity or not and they're not going to actually get into the details of explaining what they understand relativity to be okay so next one eon says and then when einstein invented the idea of the maximum possible velocity did he say that mass would increase to almost infinity uh, I think it was somebody else who, from my under, trying to understand what Einstein is saying, it's some somebody else who really introduced the idea of a maximum possible velocity, and Einstein just went along with it. And that maximum possible possible velocity is supposed to be uh, the speed of light c in vacuum, and under quantum physics, they sort of bring in things like faster than light for uh, quantum particles and they're talking about the uh, the limit of the maximum possible speed applies to uh, information you cannot send inf information faster than the speed of light but if you are not sending information then uh, that can go faster than the speed of light so it's another uh, confusing issue So Andrew says an interesting fact that has been measured is that most of the inertial mass of protons comes from the relativistic mass of gluons. Oh yeah, that's that I think that's the standard model. The standard model when it deals with particles incorporates relativity. And I I don't really understand whether Don Lincoln is going along, along with that idea or not. Just treating it from what Don Lincoln is saying about relativistic mass, uh, maybe he's abandoning that idea as well. I don't know. Anything else? Any other people? Okay. Oh, George back again. What's he saying? I put a game factor on a history exam and the professor said it was the most brilliant stow job he had ever seen. I mean the gamma factor, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> if you go fast in the speed of light, your mark should go up. Okay, Harry, thanks for joining me. Okay, okay. What what interesting insight do you have on it all? Well, it would have been helpful, I think, if uh, if you could have quoted from. Uh, some of the people that have been promoting this kind my what i've found is that this guy adler i think i posted his paper they claim he was the one to first point out this issue and yeah. then oaken has published several papers i only posted one um i think that it would be helpful to read what they're saying in these papers particularly to look at the um, abstract that tells you what the paper is about to get a feel for what they are trying to say, but I'm not sure I understand it enough to really basically tell, say their positions on it, but I got the impression that it has to do with a disconnect between the E equals MC squared equation and the relativistic mass concept. And that doesn't, they don't really line up. Mm -hmm. And so the, what they're trying to do is they're trying to, correct the teaching of relativity from the way it was taught in the past. And um, 
this one paper that I haven't posted where the guy basically tries to make that point about how the textbooks have created a lot of confusion about relativistic mass. And yeah. he goes into a lot of detail. And I, um, that paper is referenced on the talk page, uh, the Wikipedia talk page um, for any down at the bottom, there's a paragraph and um, the guy references this paper. So I think the issue is really basically about teaching relativity and mm -hmm. the textbook descriptions of it that, it, but I'm, I'm not really, um, I'm not really clear enough on, on all the issues. There are some people who like completely disagree with this. Um, yeah. And there've been papers where they say, this is completely wrong. What these people yeah. are saying. And, you know, the traditional way of teaching it is just fine. No problem. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but to me, it looks like this is a controversy that still exists in the physics community that deals with the fundamentals of, of special relativity. And they don't really want to tell you about what this, con that this controversy exists because mm -hmm. on yeah. the Wikipedia talk page, they don't really come out and say, Oh, by the way, there is a controversy. It's like in, you have to go to the talk page to find out there's a controversy because mm -hmm. they don't, they, they try to avoid saying that there's a disagreement amongst physicists in the, on the talk page. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that seems to be what we I mentioned, we mentioned before. All right. Okay. Well, as far as Einstein is concerned, yeah. apparently this is the book. This is the book. Mm. Uh, Albert yeah. Einstein's Relativity, 1920. This is where he talks about it. Mm -hmm. And general results of the theory. Here it is. Yeah. Okay. Now, what he, what he does is he connects this... Um, um, relativistic mass to E equals MC squared. Mm -hmm. I think that's where the problem lies. Mm -hmm. That's just my guess. So I would, so I think this is probably the best definite, the best discussion of the relativistic mass from Einstein's point of view mm -hmm. is in this book, the meaning of, uh, what is this? Einstein, relativity, the special and general theory. Mm -hmm. You know, most people probably should have this book. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Then there's this Lorentz book, Theory of Electrons. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of interesting because most of the stuff that you see and that's attributed to Einstein, you see, is already kind of in Lorentz. Yeah. In particular, um, you know, so Einstein kind of came along and said, oh, I've got a better theory than Lorentz, but they never mm -hmm. gave Lorentz credit for the work that he did, which was the preliminary mm -hmm. work. And of course, Einstein never um, cited anybody in his 1905 paper. It's like, oh, he invented this all out of thin air. He doesn't. Yeah. And Lorentz had already come up with the with the Lorentz factor and everything. So, yeah. So the factor. Yeah. So th this thing's got a long history, but you know these ideas they emerge. Apparently, J.J. Thompson was the first one to talk about the mass changing of the, the variable mass of the electron. Mm -hmm. And then Lorentz did some work on it and probably Poincaré and other people. And then Einstein comes along. But from the point of view, uh, from the point of view of the physics people, they just all say Einstein did it, which yeah. I think is kind of misleading. Yeah. And, But I think your point is that it's kind of, it seems like a mess to somebody who's really trying to understand the fundamentals. Yeah. I think that's what your point is. And it looks to me like if there's a controversy going on in physics about the fundamental concepts of physics, which Don Lincoln, I don't think really did a very good job of explaining it in his video because he only basically flips up the Oaken paper very yeah. briefly. Yeah. And that's not, and that paper isn't probably the best paper by Oaken to read. The one I posted, I think, is the better paper, I think. And he summarizes the whole history of the whole thing. So I suggest anybody interested in this should read that Oaken paper. Um, okay. 
Does that help, does, Danny? Does, does, does Don Lincoln agree with all that? I don't know whether... I don't really works. have any confidence in anything that Don Lincoln publishes <laughs> in, in videos, frankly. Okay. And uh, that, that's, you know, I, I find what he said, I found... You know, to me, I, you know, some of one video I, I found where he contradicted himself in different videos. Yeah. And then we tried to, um, um, I know I and um, uh, Harvey Schreiber, he kind of disagreed with what Don Lincoln was saying. And we sent some bunch of emails saying, please clarify this. We never got uh, any answer to clarify the statements that he made in some videos yeah. that weren't understandable yeah. and kind of in an arrogant way. Yeah. I mean, Lincoln didn't even respond. Some yeah. assistant responded and gave a bunch of, you know, kind of treated us like we were dumb people and, yeah. and, you know, um, we know what we're talking yeah. about. How dare you question us? And I thought that was kind of, um, that, that, that's what they do. They, 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 they think they understand it, and the anybody who well, Lincoln is so arrogant. I mean, he yeah. started out in that video saying, "Oh well, people question what I have to say, but I'm absolutely right, and we know relativity is absolutely positively correct." Yeah. You know, I mean, such. What I mean with an attitude like that, that's not a scientific attitude. That's not an open-minded attitude. Anyway, that's my rant on Don Lincoln. Okay. I, I really, I really wouldn't use him uh, in any way, shape, or form as a source of expertise. Well, I, I, I think he's quite famous, though, so his point of view is uh, taken as uh, something to pay attention. Yeah, well, to you know, he published one video where he says that the lifetime of a photon is zero, and then in another you know, video, he said that the lifetime of a photon was infinite. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I commented on that. Fine. And yeah, I mean, that, to me, that was a, you know, I mean, he's saying that the life of it's zero and infinity both at the yeah. same time. And, and he said it in two different videos. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, like, this makes mm -hmm. no sense. Well, I mean, I, yeah, he's not an expert in my opinion. Yeah. But that they mess, make a mess when dealing with uh, observers from different frames of reference. And, so but let's well, not go there. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of there's yeah. a lot of semantic ambiguity yeah. that uh, yeah. is, that is used to explain this stuff away. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Harry. So we got no Dennis. Uh, hey, Dennis. Well, the reason the reason I think that Lincoln uh, took this uh, thing about obviously special relativity is right and so on is that he's trying to uh, avoid the cancel culture by saying that I'm 100% I'm on the board, but, but, but what 1%, maybe not, because I think that the gamma factor ought to be, shouldn't be uh, considered to be a mass, result in mass gain, but just part of the fo of a formula that we have. Mm -hmm. and, and even that, even that, even though that, that leads to no new predictions of physical phenomenon, the cancel culture is so bad that as I say, he seems to have been uh, demoted as a result of his views. And, uh, you know, if he, if he was as honest and forthright as Harry, for example, yeah. he'd be gone. You know, he'd be in history. Yeah. Uh, he'd be out working at a McDonald's or to flipping burgers or something. Yeah. I, I don't know too much about the council culture in the physics community. Uh, but what you have to do if you're going to go get peer-reviewed papers published, you've got to have your peers agreeing with you. So when you say in this cancel culture in that context, yeah, yeah, they, it's the peers disagree. Protection. It's paradigm yeah. protection. Uh, they're in love yeah. with their paradigms. Why? Because all their papers, all their lectures, all their books, mm -hmm. if any, all their 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 hirings are being promoted. It's mm -hmm. all based on those. Uh, physical paradigms. If they go, then what's left, you know? And, and nowadays, uh, tenure doesn't mean all that much. They have ways of getting rid of you with tenure and all. Yeah. So you're fighting for your professional life and all your work all through the, yeah. your life. You know, it's not a, something that you can say, oh, well, you know, what the heck, you know, can't win them all. That's, that's not the way it is. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it, 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 as it's like the, uh, it, you've got to uh, get published in peer review. And if you don't get published in peer review, then uh, you're not getting your views out there into a wider audience. And so uh, probably that's what's happening if he's gone the wrong track now to what the others want to believe. But the I've, uh, sort of part of the cancer culture that I'm aware of is is, is about LGBT is the, uh, uh, the oh, gay yeah. culture things and and sort of like there was uh, there was a video I saw on that and sort of like uh, some physics professor is bringing in uh, gender cancer culture things so it's getting more and more complicated all the time. Well, at my at my alma mater, UC Berkeley. Uh, I'm told now that the, to hire a math professor, I was in a math position, my yeah. degrees in math. To hire yeah. a math professor, he has to agree with uh, diversity, inclusion, and uh, equity. Yeah. yeah, that's the yeah. modern thing. And if he doesn't, he doesn't get the job. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's council culture getting worse, but there is always, I think there's always been, well, since since they brought in that you've got to have peer-reviewed papers then that 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 was council culture within the physics community yeah but now but now it's just got worse with the woke movement it's sort of like the even more cancelling going on but they're not bringing bringing these issues of conflict in understanding relativity more to the public attention when that when they've got the dis what 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 uh what Don Lincoln said was a debate, but it's not being brought to a wider attention that there was this debate about not understanding relativistic maths. So it's all getting covered up. Well, uh, you know, they don't want to lose their, their career. So. Yeah. yeah. You, 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 you just stick with the Einstein, Einstein a genius, Einstein's relativity is correct. And then you, and then you make a paid. small change, a tiny little change. That's yeah. really only semantics. Yeah. And then, and then what happens? You know, as I say, he's no longer with. Uh, yeah. Slack. Yeah, but that, that's all like happens to extent with Herbert Dingle. He he was uh, educator teaching uh, uh, Einstein's relativity. Then he fell out with them over the twin paradox. He. He thought that didn't make sense, and suddenly it seemed like he got blackballed after that yeah, well, as a crank. So from being an expert, no, relative, he was, uh, yeah, he was mocked. He was, uh, he, they went, you know, it was almost, it was like uh, they'd say that uh, what's who's that British engineer, uh, Lathwaite? Yeah, yeah, he got. Uh, I, I saw he, that. Uh, they, his Christmas his lectures. friends wouldn't talk to him anymore yeah. at the university. Yeah. Yeah. And so he he died. He was working for the USA in a satellite rail launcher project. Yeah, he launched satellites with rail rail guns. Yeah. And uh, when he died, of course, the whole he was the only one smart enough to push something like that through. When he died of a heart attack or whatever it was, uh, the project was canceled. Mm -hmm. But uh, he, he was still in Britain, I think. But he. In order to get someone to talk to, he had to hire into a uh, satellite launcher program. Mm -hmm. What 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 Lincoln? Uh, what no? What Lathwaite was saying, uh, I think, was uh, contradicting Einstein's well, their understanding of Einstein's relativity at the time as well. So that's, that's yeah, that was another thing. Yeah, yeah. But but you know, he was contradicting Newton, which was even bigger than Einstein in Einstein. Yeah, in the UK, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Newton said that uh, you know you can't lift yourself up by your bootstraps. That's a yeah. you ruled out uh, uh, nurse propulsion, but Boeing uses it in their satellite. I mean, yeah. Crazy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's the physics community is in a mess basically, and and they're not gonna and they're trying to cover it up. Okay, thank you. Well, they live in fear. If they're, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It strikes me that it must have been like what happened when the, when the Copernican revolution started. They were trying to uh, keep it as 
uh, Ptolemy's earth centered theory, and they would go into any lengths they could to keep to that theory. And so you didn't want that question back then. Yeah, and it's, it's still the same thing. You've got a mainstream physics theory, and you're trying your best to cover up that it's a mess. Yeah. Yeah. The same old thing. Okay. Thank you. What does Jim say? He says, the issue arose when it was found that beta rays were harder to deflect by a magnetic or electrostatic field in the early 20th century and gamma factor fit the data best, no physical explanation. Okay. So they brought so uh, uh, so they brought it in the gamma factor because of the experiment uh, and what if you go by einstein he, he seems to be theorizing uh, relativity so lorentz and that were working from experiment and coming up with their maths mathematics whereas you go with uh, einstein he seems to well it gets interpreted often as he theorizes it and then he uh, gets the same mathematics so it's a question of are you working from experiment or are you working from theory okay thank you As a, i think that's is there anybody else uh, we can, any more on this and i can give you the, the talk uh -huh. about and more okay yeah uh, you mentioned uh, the uh uh well uh, lost my train of thought just a minute here uh yeah, you would mention that the speed of light was a uh, upper limit actually that's yeah. not true uh apparently if you use inertia propulsion yeah. uh, you can go even faster than the speed of light uh that's because the speed of light comes in because of uh, electro the, the acceleration and accelerators is due to electromagnetism but uh uh nurse propulsion is uh you know it's different and uh so you should be able to exceed this was uh, godfrey gooski's point of view yeah. you should be able to uh exceed the speed of light if you mm -hmm. propel yourself using uh uh nurse propulsion yeah and uh also uh there were some experiments done this is not just theory by harold willis, willis milnes dr professor harold willis milnes uh who uh, uh showed that he could send uh signals at multiples of the speed of light twice the speed of light three times the speed of light and maybe four times i don't know but this is signals now, not. Uh, uh, they, 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 they do try to talk around that the mainstream physics community. Uh, usually, one of the ways they talk about it is that information is limited to uh, by the speed of light. But you, if you non-information, can go faster than speed of light. I, I so don't think that, that hit, Will, Milnes would have agreed with that. Uh, well, they probably, he was probably sending, uh, you know, sending yeah. pulses, and yeah, and, uh, so uh, you know, that's just basically a binary uh, bit. When, when, when you've got pulses, you've got uh, phase velocity, and you've got uh, group velocity, and they sort of say one of those can go fast and speed of light, but the velocity which is carrying information is not able to go fast in the speed of light i don't think that's that's good well, that's what they say anyway yeah if right. anyone's interested i can send you yeah a, a pdf file uh, yeah 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 there's people who say they can send uh, music fast in the speed of light and uh, it's out of, out of the remit of this uh talk really talking about relativistic mass and not being able to yeah, understand that right. but so like at the speed issue is another confusing issue yeah okay. thank you well oh god my eyesight is so bad uh, uh, so oh 
Oh, we've got another question here. Uh, what class, this is Ion says, what classifies as the electromagnetic mass, such as literal magnets or something else? Uh, ah, electromagnetic mass seems to be uh, another old concept which uh, they used to talk about and they don't seem to talk about it so much now. Instead of that, they seem to be talking about uh, what, well, for my education was relativistic mass and they didn't really explain how that was related to electromagnetic mass uh, yeah 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 einstein talked to electromagnetic mass as being l divided by c squared and l is what we would now use as letter e as for energy yeah yeah so there's confusion also on that issue of, of electromagnetic mass of how does that connect to all these other masses like inertial mass, gravitational mass, rest mass, and re relativistic mass? Okay. Involved. So, how is there reason that E is somehow involved with energy? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, when, when you when you start reading these papers on. This is a bit of a diversion when really. you start reading papers on E equals MC squared. Uh, they, some of them, they start admitting that uh, Einstein didn't derive his equation E equals MC squared properly. It was a mathematically invalid derivation. And so the introduction of the equation E equals MC squared seems to be an assumption, another assumption. You've got Einstein's assumptions of constancy of light speed and principle of relativity but when you get to relative uh, when you get to e equals mc squared oh you're just going to assume that as well because einstein didn't really derive it properly from his initial assumptions but then that leads into a lot of arguing as well the yeah uh, I, the uh the uh uh Hi, Dennis. Yeah. The, the E equals MC squared actually didn't come from Einstein. It came yeah. from start out with Newton, except that he didn't know what C was equal to. Yeah. Newton uh, thought that energy and uh, mass were proportional. Yeah. And then think, uh, Thompson, J.J. Yeah. Thompson, uh, I think, had, did say that the, the constant was C squared, where C was the speed yeah. of light. Yeah, I think if you're going back as far as Newton, if you go back as far as Newton and before that, I think they didn't have the concept of energy. They were talking about something called living force and dead force. So an object uh, was either dead, not moving, or, or moving, which was living. So they weren't talking about it in terms of kinetic energy. So it's even more confusing going back to there. Okay, thank you, Dennis. Leibniz introduced the concept of uh, energy, but it was not one half mc squared, one half mv squared. It was mv yeah. squared. And they put yeah. the one half there because uh, when you integrate uh, velocity with respect to itself, you get velocity squared over two. Yeah. So that's yeah. why the two came into the. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there, 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 there's a, there's a, there is the controversy back, back then about the two. I think people were arguing about the two. Some people were going by uh, mv squared, and some people were going by half mv squared. So there's controversy back then, even I think with Leibniz and all that. So it's another mess, really. Thank you. So what's this? Ian says, didn't Einstein borrow Lorentz's idea of mass increase at high velocity to create his own concept, which is almost exactly the same relativistic mass? Question mark. Yeah, again, the problem with Einstein is he doesn't uh, cite references as to what he's going from. So if Einstein is going by what Lorentz is saying about uh, that, he's Einstein does not reference is it doesn't go a reference to that or what that is what he's going by so once again you're being uh looking at einstein and saying well 
you're trying to interpret him and say, wait, he must be going by Lorenz. And so that's an interpretation you're imposing on him. Uh, so it is a sort of, that is a mess as well. If Einstein has a theory which he formed independently of Lorentz, or did Einstein uh, work from Lorentz's ideas? And those two possibilities are not very clear at all when you try to read these things. If you go back to Einstein's paper, 1905, on special relativity, on the electrodynamics of uh, moving bodies, I think it was bodies, or that, then it's, he's not saying that he's taking anything from Lorentz other than what seems to be the Lorentz transformations. Well, so we're getting to the top of the hour here, Roger. Okay, so, we, so we've survived we another one. And, uh, and, and conclude. Yeah. And we can close out the, uh, the yeah. session today. So thank you, frankly. So the conclusion is that there seems to be an ongoing debate in the physics community about relativistic mass. And they're trying to cover this up in the... Uh, cover this controversy up they're trying to sweep it under the carpet and they're not making it more publicly known that there's a problem with relativistic mass and don lincoln gave his opinions on relativistic mass and and the interesting word he, he used was he said there was a debate in the physics back in the physics community so there's a debate going on they, they haven't agreed and so how can you promote a theory if you haven't really agreed what the theory is on such issues as relativistic maths so it's a it is just a mess and they're not being honest enough to come out and say they don't really know and there's differences of opinion on things so that covers my i think this talk on relativistic maths and so if i give you give a trailer now for the next talk which would be on Einstein's equivalence principle. And it gets even more messy with bringing that in. What Einstein did was he seems to be special relativity. You bring in the two principles of constancy of light speed, the uh, relativity principle. And then when he seems to add the equivalence principle, he comes up with general relativity. And so, trying to go on to the equivalence principle it just makes a bigger mess of things and I'm, I'm trying to i will it is it is too vast a subject really on this equivalence principle and i've been studying it for a long time and it's i'm going to if you understand it as well as i do you will end up confused about it just like i am basically so that's the uh that's the plug for the next one. Uh, it gets Einstein gets worse. If you thought relativistic mass was bad, wait till you look at equivalence principle. It blows your brain. Okay, uh, so there's a few comments here. Unfortunately, I'm not able to get to now. I think I think I just closed the session. Thank you. Hopefully, I'll be able to start earlier next time. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for everybody's help. What happened at the beginning here? I locked into the wrong session, I think. Okay. It's all just a learning process for me. Thank you. And finish. End, end stream. The button to end stream. So thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Enjoy yourself. Have a good time. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Here we go. End stream. End stream. Oh.